welcome to another session of life process guys yes guys we have already discussed the digestive system of human beings the respiratory system in human beings yes how the process of digestion takes place in animals everything we have discussed in our last video you can go and check once the videos yes and today i am here to discuss a very interesting concept of life process that is transport in plants guys how the process of transportation how water and minerals transported from the soil to the leaves and how the prepared food from the leaves are transported to various parts of the plant so in this session we are going to discuss how water and minerals and food are transported and that is what the transport in plants yes guys we all know we all know plants also requires energy why the plants requires energy guys why do the plants require energy yes 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 plants also have number of activities to do yes plants also respires plants prepares proteins plants prepares hormones plants respires plants takes part in the process of photosynthesis so likewise number of activities the plants have to do and for that energy is required and from from where do the plants get the energy from photosynthesis they prepare the food and they also take some of the food energy to conduct these metabolic activities yes so plants also requires energy for various metabolic activities yes now coming back to photosynthesis we already discussed that what photosynthesis is and what raw materials required for photosynthesis yes we know that what raw materials it is required your water your minerals your solar energy all these things are required to prepare food by the process of photosynthesis so how these water and minerals how this water and minerals which is required for photosynthesis process is carried from the soil yes how this water and minerals from the soil is carried to the leaves of the plant for the process of photosynthesis that we are going to discuss that is what called transportation and how the prepared food by the photosynthesis is distributed to all parts of the plant yes and how the prepared food in the leaves is distributed to each and every part of the plants that is called as your transportation yes guys so how many types of transportation takes place what are the different types of transportation takes place in plants two types yes two types of two things two most important things are transported in case of your plants the first transportation of your water and minerals and the second is the transportation of the prepared food once again what are the two most important thing which is transported in case of your plants the first one water and minerals from the soil is transported to the leaves yes and the second one is your the prepared food from the leaves is transported to different parts of the plants so these are the two important materials which need to be transported in case of your plants first one here the transport in plants water and minerals guys and the second one is the transport of food in your ninth class you have already read that transport of water and minerals is carried out by a tissue yes and the same way the transport of food is also carried out by tissue yes you have already read in your ninth standard just recall just recall and think and tell me what is that conducting tissue which helps in the transport of water and minerals and what is that conducting tissue which helps in the transport of your prepared food can you tell me let me know in the comment section below which tissue or which vascular tissue i have given you the hint which vascular tissue helps in the transport of water minerals and food yes okay i will tell you the tissue or the vascular tissue or the conducting tissue which helps in 
द ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ वॉटर एंड मिनरल्स इज जाइलेम यस विच हेल्प इन द ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ वॉटर एंड मिनरल्स जाइलेम and the conducting tissue which helps in the transport of food is called as your which one phloem yes xylem helps in the transport of water and minerals and phloem helps in the transport of your food materials prepared food materials to various parts of the plants understood what are the two vascular tissue which are the two vascular tissue food and food food is transported by phloem water and water and minerals are transported by xylem understood guys two types of transportation that is transportation of water and minerals and transportation of prepared food transportation of minerals takes place by your xylem and the transportation of the food takes place by phloem yes now now comes to xylem yes xylem has got one type another type that is called xylem vessels and tracheids you have read in 9th class xylem vessels and xylem tracheids yes these two parts of xylem helps in conducting the or transport of water and minerals from the soil yes which two one xylem xylem types xylem vessels and xylem tracheids i i will just recall you something about xylem vessels what are xylem vessels and what is uh, your xylem tracheids xylem vessel guys you can see here it's a long tube like structure simply first thing what about xylem vessels is you can see these are long 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 tube like structure and it is connected one uh, one xylem vessel is connected to the xylem vessels of branches the xylem vessels of branches are connected to the xylem vessels of another small branches likewise so these is long tube like structure and the walls of the remember the walls of the xylem vessels are made up of cellulose and lignin yes first thing xylem vessels are long tube like structure second thing the walls or the cell wall of the xylem vessels are made up of cellulose and lignin yes third one since it is made up of lignin na lignin is very hard it gives stability to stand it gives stability to the stem to stand upright yes so xylem vessel cell wall is made up of cellulose and lignin and lignin is very hard it provides strength to the plant to stay upright understood yes and secondly since it is made up of lignin yes some of the places in the cell wall has got pits in it yes the cell wall the thick cell wall of xylem has got pits p i t s pits what is pits pit doesn't mean pores here pit means there what happened there is no lignin deposition deposition over there yes here pit does not means pores what does pit means here there is no lignin deposition over there means the cell wall is thin there understood and due to this th thin cell thin cell wall what happened water can easily easily transport from one xylem vessels to another xylem vessel another xylem vessels to another xylem and finally it reaches the leaves understood what is the structure of the xylem vessel guys once again i am telling you first thing what you have to remember is water and minerals are transported by xylem yes by xylem vessels and xylem tracheids yes then comes your xylem vessels xylem vessels are a long tube like structure it's a long tube like structure and the cell wall of the xylem vessel is made up of your cellulose and lignin and lignin is very hard it helps the stem to stand upright yes it helps the stem to stand upright but the cell wall of the xylem vessels have got 
pits in it. Pits doesn't mean pores here. It means that there is no lignin deposition over there and the water can easily move from one xylem vessels to another xylem vessels. And in most of the flowering plants and in most of the non-flowering plants, both xylem vessels and tracheids helps in the transport of your water and minerals. Understood guys? Both flowering plants and non-flowering plants, both xylem vessels and xylem tracheids helps in the transport of water and minerals. Next comes your tracheids. Tracheids are simply their spindle shaped. Yes, they are just a spindle shape and they have got pits. But here pits means your pores. And here also the cell wall is made up of lignin. Yes, here also the cell wall is made up of lignin. It has got pits and it has tapered and it, has, it is spindle shaped. It is spindle shaped. Yes, and mostly tracheids helps in the transportation of water and mineral in case of non-flowering plants. Yes, in case of your non-flowering plants, it helps in the transport of water and minerals. Understood guys? Yes or no? Once again, I am just giving you a clear, brief idea about it. Transportation, two types of transportation takes place. Transportation of water and minerals and transportation of food. Yes, transportation of water and minerals by your xylem and most particularly your xylem vessels and xylem tracheids. Yes. How are xylem vessels? Xylem vessels long tube connected to one another. Yes, xylem vessels has got cell wall and that cell wall is made up of cellulose and lignin. Yes, and lignin is very hard. Yes, lignin is very hard and hence it makes the plant to stand upright. Yes, and the cell wall has got a pits in it. Pits in case of xylem vessel doesn't mean spores. Means there is no lignin deposition over here. The cell wall is thin. So that water can easily pass. Yes. Then comes your tracheids. A tracheid spindle shape. Pits are present. Cell wall made up of your again lignin. And this tracheids. Remember. Tracheids only transports water and mineral in case of your non-flowering plants. Yes. In case of your non-flowering plants. Your xylem tracheids transports the water and minerals, but xylem vessels and xylem tracheids transports water and mineral both in flowering plants and non-flowering plants. Yes, understood now. Next. So actually, why this transportation of water is required? First, you will say me that yes, ma'am, for photosynthesis, water is required, and hence. Transportation is required. Yes, another important reason for transportation of water requirement is transpiration. Once again, transpiration. T-R-A-N-S-P-I-R-A-T-I-O and transpiration. What is transpiration? Yes, we are discussing the concept about transportation. Yes, and here comes an another scientific term which is called as transpiration. What is transpiration, guys? Transpiration. T R A N S P I R A T I O. Sometimes in the early morning, you might have observed water droplets on the leaves. Yes, that is all because of transpiration. Transpiration means the loss of water. The loss of water from the leaves, from the tiny pores called stomata present in the leaves. Yes, that is what called transpiration. It's a most important term. Keep a star mark over there. What is transpiration? The evaporation of water. The loss of water from the leaves. Yes, the loss of water from the leaves through a tiny pores present on the leaves called stomata is called your transpiration. So since what happened? From the leaves water is evaporated. Understand the mechanism over here. Yes, transpiration means evaporation of water from leaves. Water is getting evaporated from the leaves. 
means gradually there is a loss of or reduction of water in the lower part of the plants in the lower cells of the plant yes then definitely it will give pressure to the roots to uh, to suck more water from the soil first thing step 1 what happened na transpiration occurs what is transpiration loss of water from the leaves when there is a loss of water from the leaves yes then what happens osmosis takes place how and why yes loss of water takes place so in that cell what happened the water concentration is reduced in the cells of the leaves due to transpiration water concentration is reduced yes then what happen osmosis takes place means water from higher concentration moves towards the lower concentration means lower cells has got more amount of water or higher concentration of water so water will move from higher concentration to the lower concentration by the process of osmosis yes and gradually what happen here what happen again concentration will increase yes or no so this in due to this phase what happen slowly pressure will go cell by cell down to down and down to down and finally the root cell yes the root cell will transports water from the soil to the upper parts of the leaves guys understood or not yes what happen a transpiration takes place due to evaporation what happen na there is a loss of water yes in the leaves what happen na loss of water takes place loss of water means what evaporation of water takes place what happens in transpiration means the loss of water so first step is the loss of water yes so in the leaves what happen there will be a low concentration of water it will try to extract water from the nearby cells where there is more amount of water means high concentration of water is there yes and we know that water moves from high concentration to lower concentration by osmosis yes so from the nearby cells what happen now for example these are the cells for example take it these are the cells here there is low concentration then definitely water from higher concentration will move towards the lower concentration here there will be a vacancy again again in the nearby cell what happen vacancy it will create pressure in the lower cells from the lower concentration and likewise what happen na pressure will go on yes and at the root cells what happen a pressure will be created and that pressure helps in extracting the water from the soil with the help of the root hairs present in the present in the roots guys yes what happens in the leaves first of all in the leaves evaporation of water takes place so in that cells there is low concentration of water yes it will create pressure from towards the cells which have got high water concentration and hence water from higher concentration moves towards the lower concentration so in the cells what happen na there will be again low concentration it will give pressure to the nearby cells again to the nearby cells again to the nearby cells likewise it reaches near the root cells yes and finally the root cells exerts a pressure and takes the water up from the soil understood guys so in this way what happen na the transport of water takes place in case of your plants yes now comes how transportation of minerals takes place that is what remember the important thing is transpiration what is transpiration the loss of water from the leaf from stomata yes that is transpiration and due to transpiration a pressure is ex exerted and hence osmosis comes forward and finally due in the roots also it will create a pressure that will help in uptaking the water from the soil by the process of diffusion that is what transportation of water takes place how transportation of minerals takes place guys minerals what do you mean by minerals yes minerals are generally larger in size yes and when water plus mineral combined is called as cell sap remember water plus mineral water plus mineral together called as your cell sap yes 
so roots are there in the soil water and minerals are there which is called as cell sap this water and minerals with the help of root root hairs moves towards the stem in the stem also water and minerals are there yes or no when the minerals in this case what happened na plants uses its energy plants uses its atp to extract the minerals from the soil yes remember in plasma membrane we have read about active transport when the substances are larger in size the cell uses its what ions the cell uses its energy to pick that molecules that is called active transport here comes the active transport water and minerals water plus mineral is called as cell sap that is present in the soil that is continuously moving towards the roots so in roots there is a solution in soil there is a solution plants what does it do na it uses its energy to take these mineral ions from the soil by the process of active transport guys yes water plus mineral cell sap present in the soil root with the help of root hairs is continuously taking the water and minerals how here the plants uses its energy the plants uses its energy to pick that minerals and in roots what happened na the mineral concentration will increase the mineral concentration will increase and the water concentration will decrease water is taken from the soil with the help of osmosis and minerals is taken from the soil with the help of active transport and hence a pressure is created on the root that is called as your root pressure that is called as your root pressure here two important terms comes guys a transpiration that is loss of water yes loss of water from the leaves is called as your transpiration yes and when water is lost then it will create a pressure then it will then it then comes your osmosis means water will transport from lower concentration to higher concentration and what is root pressure water plus minerals is called cell sap water is carried from the soil by diffusion and mineral is carried by active transport what is active transport means when plant utilizes its energy to take the minerals is called active transport and hence a pressure is created and that pressure is called as your root pressure understood guys how transportation takes place and then so this is what how transport of plants the water and minerals takes place in case of plant with the help of your roots now comes your food how the transportation of the prepared food takes place yes guys how phloem the phloem conducting tissue is phloem who transports the food from the leaves from the mesophyll of the leaves from the mesophyll of the leaf mesophyll why did i say mesophyll because photosynthesis takes place in the mesophyll cells yes so phloem helps in the transport of the prepared food from the leaves to different parts of the plants to different branches stems every part roots yes now how phloem phloem has another part called sieve tubes yes and sieve tubes this is what your sieve tubes there xylem vessels and xylem tracts here sieve tubes of phloem helps in the transportation of your prepared food so this is what the structure of your sieve tubes yes this is what the structure of your sieve tubes at the end of the sieve tubes what happens sieve plates are present and in that sieve plate pores are present and through that pores your food is transported one of the sieve tube is connected with the another sieve tubes another sieve tube is connected with another sieve tubes and hence the transportation of the food takes place in case of your plants understood children once again transport of food how does it takes place by phloem phloem has got sieve tubes what is the structure of sieve tubes 
here it's a tubular like structure and end of the tubes sieve plates are present and in that sieve plates what gap is present pores are present or pit is present one of the sieve tube connected with another sieve tube and hence the sieve tube from the mesophiles of the leaf transports the food to different parts of the plants yes and since food is transported from the green part to the non green plant it is unidirectional the transportation is unidirectional the transport of food through phloem is bidirectional means from green part to non green parts but the transportation of your water is unidirectional the transportation of water and minerals from the soil is only carried out by roots only now from the downwards to the upward movement so only single unidirectional movement or upward movement is there in case of your transport of water and minerals yes simply again i am just telling you your water and minerals transported by xylem xylem that two xylem vessels and xylem tracheids i have told you how xylem vessels are how xylem tracheids are xylem vessels helps in the transportation of water both in flowering and non flowering plant but xylem tracheids only transports water in case of your non flowering plants yes and why this occurs because of transpiration transpiration means the loss of water from the leaf cells yes if that cell loses water means there will be a low concentration there it will create pressure on the lower cells from the lower cells which has high concentration of water will move to the upper cells yes by the process of osmosis so this cell again has got lower concentration of water it will create pressure to the lower cells and hence what happen na it will reach up to the root cells and the root cells by the help of diffusion carries the water from the soil and distributed to the leaf yes for preparing the food and what is root pressure guys i told you what is root pressure so water plus mineral is called cell sap yes water is carried from the soil by the process of osmosis yes and minerals how minerals plant plant generally uses its energy to take these minerals by active transport when there is a use of energy to pick a material is called as your active transport and hence a pressure is created in the root that is called as your root pressure and the transportation of the food from the mesophiles of the leaves is carried out by your phloem and that too by the sieve tubes of the phloem sieve tubes at the end has got sieve plates and the sieve plates has got some pores and that pores helps in the transportation of the prepared food from the mesophile cells to the different parts of the plant and hence the transportation takes place in case of your plants hope guys you have understood once again please go and refer the books you can get a clear picture of it yes once again you just pause the video listen to it and write down the notes and i'm sure you are going to understand it properly yes so we will meet again with another concept of life process until then work hard and prepare well bye